guys and welcome back to Simplicity Electricity. Okay, so today I thought that we could take a look at a Linksys EA6300. Alright, so this is a wireless router and uh, today I'm going to tell you about it, kind of how it works, what it does, and uh, you know, I'm going to make it all simple just like always. Okay, well looking at it, uh, you can see a couple little bit of a ventilation thing up top to kind of dissipate heat that comes from inside the little unit. There's also a little bitty one down here. Overall, it's got kind of a clamshell look, I guess you could call it. Not really much to look at on the top or in the front for that matter. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom real quick though. So a lot of these wireless routers build up heat and it needs a way to kind of dissipate that heat and get it out. And this way it chooses to elevate it so slightly that the heat will come out the bottom and go around the sides and go away, which is actually really smart. A lot of wireless routers are doing this nowadays. All right, so on the back, you can see it says, well, let me zoom in a little bit for you. All right, there we go. So on the back, you can see it says that the model is a EA6300 uh, version one. So unless this thing has been upgraded or updated in the past, it should still be its original manufacturing version, software that is. All right, and a couple other things, wireless network, wireless password that it came with from the factory. Odds are if you got one of these things used, it has been changed and the MAC address and we don't really worry about that. Okay, so let's take a look at the back. Alright, so on the back uh, we have a WPS button for quick connects with other wireless devices. Uh, interestingly enough, we have a USB 3.0. Now, a lot of people like to connect like uh, storage devices to these USB outputs so that they can wirelessly access media files and stuff like that. Uh, unless you're really tech savvy, I, I can't really see you using this in your home. I mean, it's just kind of there. For God's sakes, don't try to charge something with it because that's probably not a really smart idea because it is not made for that. Just like the USB on the back of your TV, it's not made for charging stuff. So just don't try it. Uh, but for a business, I mean, usually a business would have this already set up. So don't worry about this. Okay. Um... We have the ethernet port, so we have the lights that signify, I'm pretty sure it's the green lights that signify a connection, and it's the yellow lights that flicker as data is sent back and forth. Uh, again, you don't really need to worry about these, it kind of does itself. All right, so again, these are where you would, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, this is where you would connect a device such as a computer or a smart TV or a gaming system. And this is what you would connect to your main modem. You would connect an ethernet cord to this to give internet to all these and to give Wi-Fi to this so it can send out a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, the reset button and the power supply. All right, so I should go ahead and say I did buy this used at a Goodwill for about $2. And that does not sound very hopeful when you buy something like this for $2, which is otherwise probably $60 or more. But, um, I had an extra charger, well not charger, but power adapter for this, 12 volts, 1 amp, plugged it in, lit up, worked just fine. So when you get it home, if you are buying the shoes, this is only if you're buying it used, if not you can go ahead and skip ahead in the video a little bit, uh, you're going to want to press this reset button right here and you're going to want to hold it down for about 30 seconds or more, at least until this little bitty light on the top starts flickering. All right, so that's about all I can show you uh, from this aspect of it, but uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does and see how to reset it another way. Okay, so I just so happen to have one of these Netgear AC to DC adapters and it is 12 volts and one amp. So it should work just fine for this device. Um, I kind of can't do this with one hand, so I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But basically, this Ethernet cable is connected to my modem, so I'm going to plug it into the yellow port. Uh, this connects to a PS4, and this one connects to a computer. So I'm going to plug those two in right here, and I'll be right back here in a second. Okay, so I plugged them all in, and you're going to notice that this light up here is going to flicker for a little while, uh, but it just stopped. Uh, so that pretty much means that the device is ready to go. Now. 
you're going to want to the easiest way to do this uh, but sometimes they'll start back up again so yeah that's the thing uh, but what you're going to want to do is really for like a PlayStation or a smart TV you don't need it to be wired I just prefer that because wired is faster and you know I like it more but uh, you're going to need a wired connection going to your computer and you're going to need a wired connection going to your modem now you can do this without you know having it wired but to me it's just so much easier because it recognizes the device faster but um, okay uh, we're gonna go on the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up okay guys so assuming that you followed the steps previously uh, you're gonna notice down here this little bitty symbol so right now my router has been reset and it's trying to connect to the computer now here in a minute this symbol may go away this little um, caution symbol because I previously connected this device to my computer so if my computer recognizes it even after I've reset it this will go away but anyway um, I'm assuming that this device is brand new and you want to give it its own name and its own password so I'm gonna show you how to do that right now so you're gonna wanna open up Google Chrome or your web browser and you're gonna wanna type this in now I just copy and pasted it because I've been on this website recently but you need to type it in exactly as it's listed here with the HTTP and the slashes and all that stuff because if you just type in linksysmartwifi.com for some reason it doesn't want to come up but uh, go ahead and take a minute pause the video if you need to and type this in but I'm gonna go ahead and click enter and it's going to bring me to this page if you're on this page and you see a picture of your router it means you're doing a good job alright so I'm just going to kind of run you through this. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you have to. If any time that you need to spend on it, just go ahead and do that right now. So I have read and accepted the licensing terms. Hmm. I'll have to. I'll have to read that little 50-page thing later on. Not. Okay. So basically, right now, uh, your computer is trying to make a connection to this device, and the um, router is trying to connect to the internet so it's going to bridge that connection here in a moment and um, the time kind of varies depending on you know I guess what router model how fast your internet is and yada 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 so it is going to take a while uh, in the meantime I would like to state that when you're resetting the device if you just look on the back like where all the um, Ethernet ports are if you hold down the reset button long enough when they all light up at once quit holding the reset button and that kind of indicates that you've done it properly okay well this is going to take a while so I'm going to cut this part out of the video and kind of fast forward to the page that you're supposed to get to hey okay, guys so back to it I apologize for the pause but um it sometimes these things do take a while but we are to the page so if you're to this page then you're still on the right track so basically this is saying that like do you want to install future updates for this router now um, unless that you're someone who's really experienced with these things and like for some reason you don't want your router to update which I don't really see a reason why you would unless you want to just mess with the software uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and click this little checkbox or if it's not checked already to make sure that it constantly installs updates and you know just gives you the best performance for your buck all right so this is to the part to where you can name this router whatever you want to um, now I should mention this is an AC router so AC routers now this is my personal opinion don't seem to be as reliable over a distance you know so if this is a router that's going to be close to you or at least maybe a room or two away you should be good but uh, it doesn't have any external antennas so you know don't expect it to go that far even though it probably costs a lot of money so uh, what you have here is it's a dual band router so you have the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz but in modern English what does that mean 2.4 gigahertz is the spectrum that most devices use uh, so on this device uh, 2.4 gigahertz your signal so like you could stay connected to the Wi-Fi from a further distance and have a you know pretty reliable connection but it's more likely to have interference from other you know electronics in the house 5 gigahertz is more like 
for stuff that's up close and you know going to be close to the router at all times stuff that you really don't want to have interfered with such as a playstation or something like that uh, this only applies to the Wi-Fi part though not the Ethernet part of the device so uh, let's just go ahead and call this Wi-Fi just something nice simple and sweet and uh, let's make them all have the same name so basically in this situation you could do one of two things you could have two separate Wi-Fi networks one being the 5 gigahertz which you can also change the name down here and the 2.4 uh, my personal preference is I like to just make it one and kinda let my device decide how it wants to connect again that's just me so uh, and you can also learn more about that right here by the way so our network password uh, let's just make it something simple that you know it's easy to read one two three four five six seven eight will I change this later yes I will but um, I highly recommend that you include letters and numbers and possibly symbols if it'll allow you to, which it should, because that makes it a lot harder for people to crack your password if for any reason they feel like doing that. All right, so the next step. Again, this will take a certain amount of time. If I have to cut the video, I will, but it should not take that long. Uh, by the way, you guys, the channel's doing pretty great. Um, I've gotten almost 10,000 minutes worth of viewing, and I've gotten close to 4,000 views on all my videos, which to me, that's a lot for someone who's just making this to help people. I'm really glad that you guys all like this a lot, and uh, I plan to keep making more videos. So, uh, this is something that you can do to kind of skip all of that stuff previously. Uh, a router password. So if you go onto this website again in the future and you have not reset your router, it will immediately take you to a screen where you can just type in one simple password and log on to it and get into the settings. For simplicity's sake, I kind of recommend that you change the password from what your actual router login is, but if you don't want to, that's fine. I'm just going to make it the same just for the video. Okay, so your router is set up. It gives you a short summary of what you just done, stuff to remember that you need to remember, and uh, we can go ahead and click next. All right, so I I don't really think that you need one of these. I mean, I've never used it. Uh, that's something you guys kind of just need to study on your own. But I'm gonna say no thanks. Okay. So on this screen, you, there's still a lot of stuff that you can do. Uh, if you want a guest network, like if you don't want your um, huh, melon, but if you don't want your uh, guest to log on to your main Wi-Fi, you can toggle this on and off, and um, it will take a minute to do it. Uh, that's expected for anything on here, and uh, I probably shouldn't have clicked that. Probably would have made the video go a little bit faster, but uh, wait for it to do that. Uh, you can see which devices are online, set parental controls, I mean, uh, I think that you can also probably only use one of these if you want to, like if you don't want there to be another Wi-Fi or whatever, and you just want there to be the uh, 2.4 by itself, then you should be able to get rid of this. Usually there's a setting in there to do that. Um, not much else you really need to worry about uh, the media thing again uh, I personally recommend looking at another video explaining this because I feel like I won't explain it that well to you guys because I'm trying to keep everything simple and this will just kind of muck all of that up um, and the rest of this is just kind of you know explanatory I've, I've been over this stuff before in a previous video but if you want to get rid of this Wi-Fi network, then boom, it's gone. Apply changes. So now you only have one Wi-Fi network on the 2.4 gigahertz. And um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much the setup through this. I apologize if the video took a while. I just kind of wanted to be pretty thorough. Uh, I personally recommend your security should kind of always be whatever they said as automatically unless you're a business but then otherwise you'd probably have someone else set up for you uh, the rest of this stuff uh, to keep it simple don't really worry about it 
uh, what you've pretty much done for your home is all that really needs to be done. And um, I also wanted to include this in the video too. If you want to go to the Linksys website and type in this specific model, so it comes up right here, there are plenty of forums and discussion boards that explain like all kinds of stuff on how to you know mess with the Linksys routers and do this or that or whatever but um, it shows you other ways that you can log on how to set it up uh, just all kinds of stuff and I also thought this was important to clarify what I said earlier no you cannot connect a USB hub so you cannot connect multiple devices to this it is strictly made for one storage device and that's it but um, yeah uh, I hope this helps. I'll leave this website as a link in the description, and um, that should do it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.